Hello, and let's take a look at exercise 3-12, in which we're going to look at various adjusting entries. Some of them are prepay prepayments, while others deal with the accruals. So let's read what information has been given to us first. They've asked us to record the necessary adjusting entries at December 31st, 2024 for Wolverine Company. We are told you do, not have, you do not need to record transactions made during the year, but we are going to go ahead and do that just so that we have the practice of those journal entries. Assume that no financial statements have been prepared during the year and no adjusting entries have been recorded so far. So we are at December 31st, no adjusting entries have been done and we'll take care of whatever needs to be done now. So let's start with the first piece of information and I've already told you over here, this deals with a prepayment, but let's read through the information. Here we are told that on December 1st, 2024, that's at the start of this month, Wolverine received $4,000 cash from a company that rents office space from us. The payment representing rent for December and January was credited to deferred revenue on December 1st. So let's go ahead and do the transaction on December 1st record the transaction. On December 1st, what happened? I'm the company, I received cash. I received cash, cash is an asset, it increased, therefore I need to debit the account. On the same day, they have told me that I credited deferred revenue. The reason I credited deferred revenue is I have not earned the rent revenue as yet. I still need to earn it. How do I earn rent revenue? simply with the passage of time. At the end of the first month, that's the end of December, I would earn one month of rent, rent revenue, and next month I will earn another month of rent revenue. So now that brings us to the end of the first month, which happens to be December 31st when we are doing our adjusting entries. I need to decrease the deferred revenue. The deferred revenue is a liability account. I need to decrease it by debiting it and now I will call it rent revenue. It's no longer a liability. Now I have earned it, I can call it rent revenue. How much of this has been earned? This was two months rent. So exactly half the amount, that's going to be $2,000. So exactly half the amount, $4,000 divided by two, $2,000 has been earned as rent revenue. Excuse me. Let's take a look at the next one. Again, this also deals with the prepayment. Wolverine purchased a one-year property insurance policy on July 1st, 2024 for 13,200. The payment was debited to prepaid insurance for the entire amount on July 1st. Now in this case, a prepayment has been made. I'm the one making the payment. So I'm going to credit cash. In the first case, I received it ahead of time. There was a prepayment. The other party, the customer paid me. Here, I'm paying my vendor. So cash is going to be credited, 13200 And I've been told I debit prepaid insurance. Prepaid insurance is an asset. I'm saying that I have this asset in my books. I will get coverage, insurance coverage for the next 12 months. 13,200 is for the 12 month period. Now I'm at December 31st and I need to do an adjusting entry. So now the question is, how much time has lapsed between July 1st and December 31st? So just go ahead and count. We have all of July, August, September, October, November, December, that makes it six months. So exactly half the prepaid insurance, we've gotten the benefit. Prepaid insurance is an asset. I need to decrease the asset because I got the benefit. So half the amount is 6,600. That's 13,200 divided by two will give you 6,600. Now to the extent I receive the benefit, I'm going to call it an expense and give it the most obvious name. It's insurance expense. When I receive the benefit, it's insurance expense. Here, when I earned it, I said it was revenues. So in one case, we have a revenue that is being recognized at the end of the year. Here, in this case, we're looking at an expense being recognized. So here we have, I'm going to highlight this in a different color so we can see this. We have rent revenue. 
and here we have insurance expense. And I'll tell you later at the end of the exercise why I've highlighted these two, what, what's significant about this. Let's move on to the third uh, piece of information. Here we are told that the employee's salaries of three of three thousand dollars for the month of December will be paid early in January. So on December thirty first, what we are saying is, the employees have worked for me. I already received the benefit. So salaries, expense, debit. I didn't pay them right now, so I have to create a liability in my books. The liability is salaries payable and the amount is $3,000. Now, sometime in the future, I'm going to pay this money. So let's say it's a week later in January. This goes into the next year. Remember, I'm at December 31st. So this is kind of going out into the future. So this journal entry will not be done unless it acts, the transaction actually happens. So what's gonna happen in the future? In the future, my liability will decrease and that only happens when I pay the cash to my employees. The money that I owed them, I pay them, and that's going to happen in the future. But for now, on December 31st, again, what do you see over here? I have salaries expense debited. So in this case, the transaction will happen in the future. The adjusting entry is happening before the transaction. This is an accrual. Prepayments. You had a transaction happen and then the adjusting entry. So note the order in which this is happening. Let's look at yet another accrual. November 1st, 2024, the company borrowed $15,000 from a bank. The loan requires principal and interest payment of 10% to be paid on October 30th, 2025. So let's see the transaction that first happened. The transaction, I borrowed money I received cash from the bank. They gave me the money, not because it's a gift. Well, I have to repay that money. And that money that I re have to repay represents a liability, not payable. And that amount is $15,000. When do I have to pay the $15,000? October 30th of 2025. So 10 months out into the next year, I'm at December 31st. So it's 10 full months before I have to make that payment. So I don't need to worry about paying the cash right now. However, on this $15,000, interest is accruing every month. That interest as well, I'm going to pay later on, along with the principal, principal being that 15,000. I will pay the principal and interest on October 30th. I don't have to worry about the payment part right now. However, what I do need to worry about right now is what we see over here, I have, oops, give me a second here. I have principal of the amount is $15,000. On this, I'm being charged interest at the rate of 10% per annum. So 10% of 15,000 is 1,500, but this represents the interest for 12 full months and that I will pay on October 30th. Again, at what point are we? We are at December 31st. So November 1st through December 31st, how much time has gone? All of November, all of December, that is two months. So two out of the 12 months, has I have to accrue the interest. So two out of 12, 1500 times two over 12 will give me $250, okay? So again, I need to do the accrual entry only for this amount, only for the 250. So my accrual entry, my adjusting entry is for the $250. Here, what am I saying? I have accrued interest. Interest is owed. Again, that expense is showing up over there. I'm not paying it today. I will pay it in the future. Interest payable credit and that's in the future. Now let's come to the last piece of information and let's see what we have over here. Office supplies at the beginning of the tw of 2024 totaled $1,000. On August 15th, Wolverine purchased an additional $3,400 of office supplies, debiting the supplies account. By the end of the year, $500 of supplies remains with us. 
So let's start with the transaction part. During the year, I purchased $3,400 worth of supplies. So at that time, I debited supplies, the asset. I paid for it. Let's assume it's a cash transaction. And that's $3,400. Now, before I get to my adjusting entry on December 31st, here I have a T account, and this T account is for supplies. I was told that I have a beginning balance of $1,000 that was given to me in the exercise. Then we know that we purchased another $3,400 worth of supplies, and that is $3,400. So how much do I have available for use? So this number over here is... Available for use. Okay, let me put this out here. This is what's available for use. Of this, how much is remaining? 500 is remaining. The ending balance is 500. The ending balance is 500. So the obvious question is, what happened to the difference? The difference is what was used. The 3,900, this number is what got used up. What got used up becomes supplies expense and we credit supplies. Now, if you recall what we've talked about in all three chapters, we're in chapter three. In all three chapters, we always said, you first do the journal entry and then you post into the T account. This is one unique case in which I first did the T account in order to figure out this 3,900, and then I brought that number in over here. So we are backwards in this one case. Again, we have supplies expense. Now let me just go back and go over these revenues and expenses that I highlighted over here. What do you see? Every single adjusting entry, you will have a revenue or an expense account that's affected. In your adjusting entries, you will always have a revenue or an expense account affected. The next thing you will notice is you have a liability or an asset account, and in some cases, an equity account that could be affected in the adjusting entries. But always keep this in mind. A couple easy things to remember as far as adjusting entries are concerned. You will never debit or credit cash there are only two exceptions. We have not come across sources yet. So at this point of time, we do not debit or credit cash in the adjusting entry. In every adjusting entry, at least one expense or revenue is debited or credited. Expenses are debited and revenues are credited. So always keep that in mind as far as your, your adjusting entries are concerned. And also keep in mind the order in which these the adjusting entry and the transactions take place for accruals and uh, your uh, prepayments. So with this, we'll stop here and get started with the next exercise shortly.